morning, my name is Rachel. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. Today I'm just going to take you guys along with me and show you what I eat in a typical day. So right now I'm doing the lion diet, which is a stricter version of the carnivore diet that only includes ruminant meats. For the most part, I just eat beef, but I also occasionally have other ruminant meats such as lamb, goats, veal, or bison. Lately I've been doing two meals a day and I try to eat within a certain window. So I try to eat within like 10 to four or five. And I've been kind of trying to narrow down that eating window to experiment with intermittent fasting. But this is something that I had to work my way up to because when I started the carnivore way of eating, I was underweight and really struggling to eat enough. And so it just wasn't the right time to start with intermittent fasting and really the goal at that point was just trying to get as many calories as possible. So this is just what I'm doing, what has been working for me, but obviously everyone is different. So another thing to note is that I've been eating all unaged meats and cooking it from frozen. This is to try to minimize my histamine intake due to histamine intolerance that I've been dealing with. This is something that I definitely don't plan on doing forever because I really want to ultimately heal. But for now, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so this is frozen lamb broth that I made a few days ago, and I keep it frozen to minimize histamines. Then I just slightly defrost it in warm water for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so I have some frozen brisket here. This is actually from a big 10 pound brisket, so I had the thought to cut it up into pieces that would fit into the pressure cooker but it looks like these pieces are kind of frozen together so i'm gonna maybe have to have my husband help me with getting them with getting them apart like i said this is unaged beef that's frozen directly after it's been slaughtered so that keeps it really low histamine but the rest of it i'm gonna make will work just fine with fresh brisket or frozen either way my husband was able to get the brisket pieces apart, thankfully, but this is what they look like. They have a lot of fat on them, which I like, and it tastes really good. So I just put them in the Instapot bowl, add some warm water on top, and then I usually leave the fat cap up. Then I just put it in the Instapot, turn it onto manual for around 80 to 100 minutes, depending on how big the brisket is. You can cook it for longer if you want it to be a little bit more fall apart. But that's it. The broth is defrosted enough to heat up. I heat it up on the stove versus in the microwave. Um, so to make my broth, I use unaged bones and I keep them in the freezer and then I will roast them in the oven at like 400-ish for like 30 minutes and then I'll put them in a pot, fill it with water and just add electrolytes or salt. As I've been doing a lot of research on broth and stock, I've come to believe that it might be a huge part of healing for a lot of people. Something that in the beginning I really didn't realize was that traditional slow cooked broth is actually cooked for up to like two days and that ends up being very high in histamines and so a lot of people will react to it, especially in the beginning. And so people will just stop drinking broth and say, I don't, I don't tolerate it. In the GAPS diet, which is not what I'm doing, but I'm learning about it, people start off with something called meat stock where they're basically just boiling the bones with meat in it on the stove and then they're drinking the broth from that and people typically will boil it for just like two hours and really ultra sensitive people might even start with like just 20 minutes or something like that but just those nutrients can be so amazingly effective at healing the guts and so I'm trying to really incorporate that and drink 
at least a couple of cups of broth a day. I've also been drinking the broth from the meats that I cook in my Instapot, which is just like the liquid that's left over. And so I'm hoping that will lead to healing of my gut. It's something that I'm really hopeful for. I'm hoping that my histamine intolerance will eventually be healed and resolved. And I think it will. Like I'm willing to search to the ends of the earth until I can find a way to heal this histamine intolerance. But I'll go into histamine intolerance and the symptoms and signs of it in more detail in another video. But basically, that's why I've been drinking broth. And sometimes I use the Instant Pot and sometimes I just boil the bones on the stove. So I've kind of been going back and forth between those two. But if I use the Instant Pot, I will cook it for about two hours and then I let it cool enough to where it's like room temperature and then I will put it into jars or bags and immediately freeze it to again try to reduce the histamines. If the bones or the meat are, that are used in the broth are really fatty, I will wait until the fat settles at the top and then I'll scrape the fat off just because that liquid rendered fat can be really harsh on the gut for some people. So yeah. That's really good. I'm actually not a huge fan of lamb, but this is very mild and it's made from Billy Doe Meats bones and all of Billy Doe Meats is unaged. All of their beef, all of their lamb, goat, veal. That's primarily what I've been eating, but I find that the bone broth or the meat stock, whatever you want to call it, is very mild in taste and I like that. It's just like a nice change from water. We actually are staying in an Airbnb right now, so this is not my home, but we're staying here for six weeks, and so we bought our Instapot and our Crock-Pot and our sous vide, and I brought a whole giant freezer full of frozen meat for this trip. So I'm learning some carnivore travel hacks, but right now we don't have access to all of our fun cooking methods, but I'm taking a break from smoked meat, sadly, to try to lower my histamine intake. But I'll get back there. I'm not too worried about it. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'll catch up with you in a little bit. My brisket is close to being ready. going to go ahead and eat the first meal of my day and like I showed you guys it's pressure cooked from frozen and brisket and then I put the broiler on with the oven and I just put them on some foil and broiled them for like two-ish minutes on each side to make them crispy. I used to put them in a skillet with like beef tallow to crisp them up but that's been really upsetting my stomach lately so I think the broiling is a bit gentler on the stomach and still gives a good nice crisp on the fat so let's give it a try mm. so good lately i've been eating around one and a half to two pounds of food total a day and i typically split that up between my two meals so i think this is probably a little over a pound we'll see if i can finish it i had some leftovers and put those in the freezer so i can reheat them in the air fryer later who says brisket isn't a breakfast food i had a doctor's appointment last week and they asked me like if i had eaten anything that morning and 
what time and what I ate and I was like I, I had brisket for breakfast and they were like oh sounds like you had some leftovers I was like nope just making brisket for breakfast so that's my usual so brisket in general is a cut that's generally a lot cheaper and very fatty I think a really good smoked brisket can rival a ribeye which I know is basically like blasphemy coming from me but I've become a huge fan of brisket and like I said I'm taking a break from smoked meats but we've smoked some amazing brisket and I can't wait to get back to eating that but for now this is still pretty darn good oh and I almost forgot I always put Redmond salts on everything that I eat and the electrolytes you saw me put on are also Redmond's unflavored electrolytes so I tend to add that to all the water I drink and often to the food I eat too, so. You'll see some non-lion diet foods in the fridge and the freezer. Those are my husband's. But with all the water I drink, I typically put like a drop of iodine in each big cup. So it ends up being like two or three drops a day. I kind of go back and forth between the Keto Chow unflavored electrolyte drops and the Relights unflavored powder. I'll put a link to both of those down below. I just got back from the pool, that's why my hair is all wet and I'm wearing a different outfit, but it's still the same day. And we are actually in Florida for medical treatments for me, so we're trying to take advantage of the beautiful winter weather and get some real vitamin D in as much as possible. So I actually have another channel where I've been sharing my chronic illness journey for a couple of years, so I'll put a link to that down below if you want to follow along there as well. I think I'm actually going to get some my dinner or second meal of the day started here soon and i'm planning on making some lamb bacon and just reheating some of the brisket that i made this morning in the air fryer so super simple super easy some of you guys may not know this but the reason that i'm doing this way of eating is to try to heal severe chronic illness so for actually many years i wasn't even well enough to cook my own meals and that's one of the improvements that has come for me with this way of eating it's just being able to physically cook my own meals and so it's been exciting for me and i've enjoyed trying different cuts of meat and trying different styles of cooking and it's just a way that i can keep variety on a very strict way of eating so i'm just thankful to be able to even cook my meals because it's an ability that i lost for years it's one of those simple things of life that i don't ever want to take for granted again so i just got the lamb bacon and the leftover brisket out of the freezer and then i put the lamb bacon on some foil so it can cook in its own fat which makes it even better tasting and when I air fry things, I'm never super specific about what temperature I use or how long I cook it for. I tend to kind of just like do around, you know, 350 to 380 and then I'll put it on for like 10 minutes and then check on it. And with the lamb bacon, I will just kind of separate it so that all the pieces get cooked thoroughly and just keep checking on it until it's done to however crispy you like it we have leftover brisket from this morning i just put it in the freezer after i was done eating and then put it back in the air fryer and crispy lamb bacon and that is really fatty and delicious so just gonna add my redmond salt to everything like I said, I'm not a huge lamb person, but the lamb bacon is my favorite of all the lamb cuts. It's kind of like carnivore popcorn. I was just listening to a podcast, and it was done by a doctor who treats chronic pain naturally, but she was talking about food, and she said something like, Every single bite you take either adds to your health or subtracts from your health. That really resonated with me and nutrition is something I've come to believe is so important for our overall health. I'm really glad that I started the animal based way of eating. It's definitely changed my life. I have a long way to come before being healed and well but I'm definitely doing better now than I was before I started this way of eating so I will be continuing 
for a very long time and maybe even forever. I don't plan to ever go back to processed foods or sugar and definitely not seed oils. So we're staying on a golf course here. So we have this little porch area in our Airbnb and it's nice to get some fresh air, but there is like a screen here. So it's not totally open air. Anyways, that's the gist of what I eat in a day. It's very simple and like I said before, I'm on the lion diet, so I'm only eating ruminant animals, mostly beef, but like you see here, a little bit of lamb here and there, which is also a ruminant animal. Very simple, very nutrient dense. I will say if you're new to this way of eating, it can be hard in the beginning and a rough transition phase, but well worth it if you stick to it for the long haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and follow along if you haven't already. And I will look forward to seeing you guys next time. Mm.